and welcome to this digital series about investment in Sweden. My name is Monica Enquist and I'm head of the business and trade and communication and culture department here at Embassy of Sweden in Berlin. And a warm welcome to our studio in our joint Nordic venue, Fellesus. This uh, Fellesus is open seven days a week, so we, you're warm welcome to visit us here, see our new exhibitions and seminars and participate in our events. This is our fourth program in this series where we want to highlight possibilities to do investments in Sweden or collaboration projects. We're also trying to zoom in on different regions in Sweden. And today we're going to visit Skåne and focus on sustainable tech. Over the years, an ecosystem of technological industries has evolved in the region Skåne, reaching from clean tech, smart cities, to games and life science. You're going to hear from the business developer at Invest in Skåne, Martin Backlund. We're also going to hear about smart cities from Åsa Bjäring, working with the H22 City Expo. And we're also going to hear from two German companies located in Sweden. Welcome to Malin Dahlroth at Uniper and Camilla Björkman at E.ON. And the concept is that we will talk for around 40 minutes. And after that, I will open up the floor to you to ask your questions. So please write your questions in the chat function or in the Q&A function. And you don't have to write a presentation because I will only read your question. So take the opportunity. And uh, I will also give you a little bit of a technical advice for the best experience today. If you're not using a computer by an, but an iPad or an iPhone, then please have it in active speaker view. OK, so we will now move a little bit forward north to Sweden, but we will be all the way down south in Sweden in Skåne. It's a, a region which is famous for its beautiful landscapes. It has 1.2 million inhabitants and it's a growing business region. It is also the gateway to Sweden from many countries in Europe, either by ferries or the beautiful bridge uh, from Denmark. And we at the embassy are working a lot with the Agenda 2030, the Sustainable Development Goals. And I know today that we are going to zoom in on a couple of them. For example, we will definitely talk about innovation and infrastructure, goal number nine. And of course, we will talk about goal number seven, energy. And I also know we will talk about goal number 11, smart cities, how to build future cities. And we will also have a climate friendly approach talking about the future in industrial climate solutions. So please join us for this ride to Skåne. And let me start with inviting Martin Backlund, working at Invest in Skåne. You're working with the, these issues every day. So could you please tell us, give us a little bit of uh, approach of the business region Skåne. What are we looking at, Martin? Skåne is uh, the thriving uh, region of southern Sweden that is uh, closest to Denmark. And I would say that we have sustainable development as a, a lead theme in, in almost all technology areas that are represented in the region from smarter energy to smarter mobility, to health tech, to, to uh, even technologies such as 5G and 6G, which are developed in, in Lund, uh, are used to make our world smarter uh, and also to consume less resources. So I would say it's, it's, it's a very strong profile of Skåne. And we're very happy also to, to do this with, with some of our strong companies in the region working actively on new solutions, which is E.ON and, and Uniper. And I, I'm delighted to also that Åsa is with us from, from H22, which is a city exhibit in, in Helsingborg this summer that will showcase all sorts of, of smart solutions for cities, both uh, technologically, but also how we're going to live together in the future in cities. Uh, so I would highlight really uh, what is special about the region is that we're one of the most innovative regions in Europe. And it comes from, from some different places. We, we have a couple of good universities, but we also have a very strong industrial tradition 
from, from uh, Tetra Pak and the first milk separator from Alpha Laval, going into Ericsson, establishing here, er, building the early mobile phones and creating an engineering culture that is very curious and that is also uh, uniquely positioned to take uh, research and ideas and packaging it into into a product that can that can make a difference that can be sold uh, and, uh, and you don't find you this don't engineering, find tradition engineering tradition everywhere in the world so i think we're, we're a little bit we're unique, unique in in uh, in this connection and this curiosity for new technology and, and making something out of it that that could benefit the world Thank you, Martin. And if we now have uh, German uh, investors or German companies that are interested in the region Skåne, how can Invest in Skåne help them? Yeah, Invest in Skåne, we, we're actually funded by the, the, the local government, the municipality, municipal government for Skåne, and we're, we're a wholly owned subsidiary. And our job, our purpose in life is basically to help foreign companies find their way in Sweden. Whether it's come to finding a site or a partner or a research partnership, or even looking at interesting companies with new technologies to invest in, uh, invest in Skåne can help out. And then we have the other side of invest in Skåne. We also do export promotion. So we're, we're making sure our smart companies in Skåne also find contacts abroad uh, to widen the market, find distributors and so forth to, to grow the Skåne economy. So that's the purpose of Invest in Skåne. Thank you, Martin. And I will come back to you a little bit later on, but now I would like to invite Åsa Bjering. We are going to focus on one of the cities in Skåne, Helsingborg. And it is a city that is top ranked within environment and climate areas, and also growing city with a lot of chest beds as well. Would you like to share, Åsa Bjering? Yes, thank you. Well, Helsingborg is, has approximately 150,000 inhabitants. And that makes us the, um, now I hear it's rounding, but that's okay. It makes us the second largest city in Skåne, the eighth largest city in Sweden, but we're still a mid-sized city in that sense. But we outplay ourselves uh, in our innovation work together with our very close innovation system. And the core innovation system in Helsingborg, as in many other cities, I would say it goes the same for Malmö, it goes the same for Lund, is built on the municipal owned companies when we talk about um, smart, sustainable uh, and inclusive cities. So we have the port of Helsingborg. So if you're actually coming in with products or goods to Sweden, it's very likely that you go through the port of Helsingborg, which is the second largest which is the second largest container port in Sweden. Um, in this port right now, we have a very strong goal to be fossil free in production by 2024. Now that has gathered quite a lot of interest from international companies coming investing and testing in Helsingborg's port. Uh, we have, for example, Einride, where we're testing automated pods right now. Uh, one of the first and largest ports doing this test together with Ainwright. We have Elon Road, which is a, a Lund-based company that is trying their electric uh, waste in a last mile solution here in the port of Helsingborg. We're also moving the port uh, because we're such a fast growing city. So we're moving the port right now, which gives a, quite a lot of new opportunities for businesses uh, to join us in that sense. The well, municipalities sounds... also, sorry, sorry. Very interesting with the move. Please move on. <laughs> Please go, go on. The, the municipalities in Sweden also own very often the waste management companies. Now, our waste management company covers the northwestern part of Skåne. Uh, and here, um, I would say if, if, if we look at, you know, track records as cities, we like to compete. And there is this very high profile uh, um, I would say a word for being the most sustainable uh, city in, in Sweden. And we have been named the most sustainable environmental friendly city in Sweden four years in a row. Last year, Malmö beat us. Now that's the largest city in Skåne. Lund is very often also up on the top three here. So what you have is a 
an, a regional innovation ecosystem of cities that are kind of you know competing within the, each other on high ambition and impact in that sense. The waste management here is of course crucial and the circularity systems that are built around this and how that connects with the digital new uh, reality that we see. Uh, so we have a, an industrial park connected to our waste, to our dump, uh, to our city dump, which is really exciting to see how the companies are utilizing uh, this as kind of, you know, their, their testing area. The energy company uh, Öresundskraft, we will hear from Ion soon, uh, is also collaborating quite a lot on new digital solutions uh, to drive the smart cities. Uh, and since we are such a have a st strong focus on urban logistics, we really see the excitement of what can these kind of innovation systems do in order to support scaling up. So what we did with Volvo is that we are now tr trying really large uh, charging poles for lorries. Again, it's because of uh, the logistic hub uh, reality of Helsingborg, and where we see quite a lot of the lorries that go on the ferry, it only takes 20 minutes. It's a totally electric ferry taking you over the sound to, to Denmark. And when they stand there and wait for the ferry, they can super fast charge the new electrical engines uh, that they have. Now, this was put in place in 2021 in November. And already uh, in uh, April, we saw that okay, it functions and through the innovation ecosystem of Öresunds Kraft, it gets the power of five regional energy companies now scaling this up. And I think that if you look at the small city or a mid-sized city, my bosses say that I should say, <laughs> such as Helsingborg, you kind of need to look at what are the innovation ecosystems that we strive on. Now we strive, of course, on the Skåne innovation ecosystem and on the Great Copenhagen innovation ecosystem. But we are also aiming to, to really step up our efforts on the string innovation ecosystem, where we see connections up from Oslo all the way through Fairman Belt to Germany, of course. So more than welcome, I think that there's quite a lot of potential and, uh, 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 and business opportunities for, uh, for um, German-based companies to see what's happening here in this very fast uh, moving environmental ambitious cities. The water management company is also municipal owned. And what we are trying, we are a state of the art test bed here uh, with a new sewage system, three pipes out, uh, where we have the only uh, now residential sized a living lab and test bed on gray water uh, coming in here. Again, where you can see the digital solutions meet the environmental solutions to a large extent. Oh, I could talk for hours, but I think that very, very often when you connect to Swedish cities, you should see that the innovation ecosystem is quite handable. Uh, it's tangible due to the reason of how we have set up the governance and these kind of engines and motors of innovation are very often closely linked to the municipals as such, which means that for Skåne, uh, the smart city and uh, the, the uh, clean tech solutions that come do that in a, in a strong collaboration between the cities, sometimes a healthy uh, competition, but furthermore, a strong and healthy collaboration where we can see that, okay, it's possible to try something in a small and mid-sized city, may that be Lund, may that be us. Uh, and then you scale it up and you use the innovation ecosystems that we support uh, the companies in. Well, thank you, Osa. So obviously a lot of things is going on in Helsingborg, not only the upcoming H22. I will let you come back in a little bit where you can share more about the H city H22 City Expo. And I will also like to invite our, uh, the companies that are located in Skåne, uh, the German companies. And first, I would like to hear from you, Malin Dahleroth, you are head of business development, development at Uniper. Could you start by just sharing a little bit about Uniper? Yes. Hi. Um, Uniper is an energy company based in Düsseldorf, uh, there we have our headquarters. 
and um, in uh, Sweden we have uh, uh, 76 uh, hydropower plants, uh, half of them in the north, half in the south. And it's uh, eight terawatt hours, so it's a big part of our business. We are also uh, uh, having uh, uh, ownership in all of the uh, nuclear reactors in Sweden. And uh, the, the third thing is that we have uh, stands for security of supply and that we do through our our, we have nine gas turbines, uh, which we have contract with the uh, Svenska Kraftnät, the authority. So when they want us to to uh, run these uh, gas turbines to stabili uh, stabilize the, the, the net, we are doing that. Uh, and these are in the disturbance reserve and we have three to 15 minutes to uh, get up on the net and run them. And then we also have one power plant in the strategic reserve, which also we have contract with Svenska Kraftnät and we also run when it's uh, needed. So, so that's uh, our base. It's uh, rather uh, big power plants and that we uh, stands for the security of supply. And in our strategy uh, now, it's uh, really to, <clears throat> to uh, uh, reach the climate goal. Um, uh, it's to um, grow in the uh, renewable area, it's to grow in uh, hydrogen, and we have a focus area in the company, and that's uh, actually to grow in the Scandinavia. And I, which is uh, uh, yeah, employed in uh, Sweden, uh, would like that we will invest a lot of these new projects, of course, in uh, Sweden. And, and what I really like with uh, uh, doing my job just now is that it's uh, not so often when you have you have the EU, they have uh, the climate goal. It's really that you should uh, lower the the, uh, the temperature with one uh, or not the increase with more than one and a half degree, and and that uh, you have a clear goal in 2050. Then you have the Swedish national strategy, which also is in line with the EU. And then uh, my company, uh, Unifer, we are also in line uh, with these uh, uh, goals. And uh, that I think it's a really good, uh, good opportunity and a window really to make the investment that when you have all these uh, things together, then you, ha you can have the, the uh, uh, politicians behind you because you need them uh, due to the uh, legislations and then you also locally see the need and then uh, also the company behind us. So I think that's really interesting to be part of uh, this just now. Thank you and that was a little bit what I was curious to ask you about why, why you have be talking about Skåne as a region and why that is a suitable place for you working with smart energy and hydrogen. Yeah, yeah. first I can give an example that's actually not in, uh, in Skåne, it's uh, on the west coast. Uh, we are part of a project. Uh, there is a chemical, co chemical company passed up. Uh, they, they, uh, are, uh, they are doing to do the process fossil free. And uh, we are a part of that uh, project and uh, will uh, stand for the hydrogen part. And what they will do is to de decrease uh, uh, the uh, environment with 500,000 ton uh, of uh, CO2 uh, yearly. And that's really, I think, is what we really would like to do, to be, be part of this sustainability journey and what we have in in the south of uh, Sweden we have sites uh, which is uh, for example we have Basebeck which is of uh, natural interest interest from an energy perspective and with the infrastructure and also that it's uh, close to to uh, the sea and uh, Basebeck which is a harbor also so that we think it's good and that we also have the industry in this area will also need to to do the transmission to be fossil free and the closeness to Europe when you have the transport you will have the heavy transport coming from Europe and then they will come up through Skåne when they will reach the rest of the country uh, therefore I think that this is uh, 
uh, really interesting and an opportunity to think about Skåne as a possibility a possible area to invest into. And a third thing, if you talk about the Sweden as a, a country, Sweden um, is a healthy country uh, as, the, as a nation. You have an, a triple A rate when you talk about the financial stability. And that's also uh, a good thing when it comes to the investment. And also that we are really good in the cooperation and a good cooperation between the municipality, the region, and then also the companies. Well, it sounds very interesting and thank you also for inviting the German audience to different participation or collaboration projects. And you mentioned Barsebeck as one example. Would you like to elaborate a little bit more about that? Yes, uh, Barsebeck is uh, a site. Uh, we have uh, had two, uh, we have had two nuclear reactors on this site. Uh, they were closed down in 1999 and 2005, and now it's in the commission. But here you have uh, the infrastructure in place, in place uh, and, and also a really good uh, connection. Then you can talk to Eon and Camilla. <laughs> it's also uh, directly in connection to to this site and, and, and the, our vision for this site, it's, it's that it will be some kind of uh, uh, energy park and that's all for the future energy solutions. And, and here we are really open for, uh, uh, for look at the different solutions. So we, we're happy to take uh, uh, all, uh, if you have any ideas, uh, we're happy to take them. Uh, what we are doing, doing just now is to uh, develop and um, uh, look into um, a solar uh, park. So that's what we are doing, but we're also thinking about uh, uh, batteries, uh, hydrogen and so on, and also how you can con connect to the sea. Uh, and, and then we also have another uh, power plant in Malmö, uh, in the, uh, also in the, in the harbour, uh, which we also is this of strategic interest, which we also look for how we will de develop this uh, into the future. Okay, so great. A lot of posi possibilities here. So if you're watching today, please write a question directly to Malin if you're interested in any of these areas or to anyone else in the panel as well. And if you're interested, Malin, could you give any advice? Uh, you talked a little bit about uh, how to be close to the, to the local politicians, etc. What kind of advice would you give if someone is interested to invest or start a company in Sweden or so? Yeah, I, I, I think it, it's good if you have a connection, maybe to a company uh, which is based in Sweden. And also via, for example, uh, Skåne Invest, if you are in Skåne, we have a business Sweden and so on. So this is uh, organization will really help to find the right uh, uh, partners. And, and, uh, and also to really, if you have a, pre um, a project, uh, look into uh, what will be the be benefit for the municipality. So it's not only a benefit for your own company, it has to be a benefit uh, for the region, the uh, municipality and the society, because that's the, I think that's the key. That's the key. And really look uh, close to where you are, uh, would like to have the project. You cannot come as a big company, okay, now I will invest in, in Sweden uh, and the only think of the own company's interest. You have to think what will be the benefit also for the uh, neighbors and uh, Sweden, the region. I think that's the future to think, think big and not, and not think uh, ego. You uh, should think eco. Okay, so not think ego, but think echo is the message from Malin. Thank you so much, Malin. I will come back to you a little bit later on. And I now are very happy to invite Camilla Björkman, head of Ectogrid and Digital at Eon City Quarter Solutions Nordics. And I would like to start with the same question to you. Can you tell us a little bit about Eon? Yeah, I hope you know a little bit of the Europe's largest operators of energy networks, electricity grids and heating grids. 
energy infrastructure solutions and also a provider of all kind of innovative customer solutions. We have 50 million customers all over Europe. I mean, it's, it's uh, Germany, of course, UK, uh, also uh, Poland and other Eastern uh, regions. And now uh, we're also building up uh, business areas uh, within the Netherlands, uh, um, Italy, France even. And of course, we have uh, businesses in, Europe, in uh, the Nordics. So if we have 50 million customers overall, we have 1 million customers in Sweden. So a little bit smaller market, but still quite big. And uh, within Sweden, we have, uh, uh, you know, uh, also electricity grid uh, business and uh, uh, some really large scale district heating and district cooling grids and uh, uh, solar uh, yeah, batteries and, and uh, like, uh, uh, charging stations and all, the, all those kind of solutions, of course. And then we have Ectogrid. And EctoCloud, and I will talk a little bit more about that later on, I guess. Mm -hmm. Let's focus on uh, that because it's such an interesting project, and so certainly, especially these times. So, could you tell us a little bit about EctoGrid? Yeah, I'm head of EctoGrid and also EctoCloud. It's a digital uh, platform that is. It's a data-driven platform that is monitoring and optimizing the whole solution. And I'm really proud of this. It's a Swedish invention. And uh, it's not uh, a coincidence that this come from Sweden actually, because we, are, we have a very extensive experience of large scale distribution of thermal, thermal distribution since we have this uh, we have district heating and district cooling system in, in every city almost in Sweden. We also have a lot of experience with heat pumps. And uh, I guess that that is due to the fact that we historically at least have had uh, uh, really uh, cheap electricity. Uh, and uh, so what we did at the EON, we kind of combined uh, the, the, these two so uh, really combine the, the district heating competence that we have with, with the standardized small scale um, heat pumps. And we built a, a solution that um, is able to provide both heating and cooling from the same two grids. Uh, so you get two, two things for the price of one, you can say. And uh, what is also really unique is that it's a low temp grid. We work with really low temperatures. I mean, we talk about um, uh, from zero to 30 degrees, something like that. And when you have this really low temperatures, you can reuse a lot. You can reuse waste energy from uh, industries, from the cooling towers, from uh, uh, data centers, from... Uh, also wastewater treatment plants, for example, uh, a lot of these low temperature waste are really going to waste today. It's not reused, but you can just put it into this grid. And also when you have the low temperature grid and you have small scale heat pumps in each building, you can share heat buildings. So, uh, you reuse and you share before you add on with energy. And this uh, makes it very energy efficient. Uh, and then since it's standardized equipment and so on, uh, it's uh, fully automated. So you can run the system from your mobile phone. Uh, and that's also uh, really unique, I think. And it's also easy to scale in that sense. You can build a solution all over the world. Uh, you just need electricity. And if you don't have it, you can produce electricity. There is a lot of op 
possibilities to, to kind of work with flexibilities in the solution due to the fact that we have the digital layer that we are using thermal inertia in both the ground in the accumulator and also uh, the building's thermal inertia. So uh, uh, we believe within E.ON that this is a solution that will be part of the decarbonization in Europe when it comes to heating and cooling. And we are now launching it all over Europe. But, sorry, sorry. But we are, uh, we are still keeping it within Sweden. And that's a little bit interesting. We talked about that we have an innovative climate here and that we have a lot of sustainability knowledge and so on in the southern part of Sweden. And this is also a proof uh, for that, that uh, even if we have this 50 million customer company within E.ON, uh, E.ON is keeping the product uh, development within Sweden. Okay, for so now at least. <laughs> you only yeah. you need to use a mobile phone to be able to control it, was that so you said? Yes, yes. Wow. And with this solution, the Ectogrid, you're also open up to collaborations uh, and the possibilities for people also to come and, and see it at your demo station in Skåne, right? Yes, yes. So please come and visit Helsingborg and also visit uh, our showroom in Medicon Village. That's a good, you have two reasons now. And then also go to Barsabek. And I mean, all these three places are 30 minutes within a 30 minutes range to go between them. Yeah, yeah. when it comes to invest and so on, I mean, like we said, we have a big challenge all over Europe to decarbonize, to get away from the gas driven solutions that we have. And uh, this is a perfect solution for that. And, and uh, you can always uh, be, uh, you can always invest in projects together with us that's one way of investing uh, because what we do with Ectogrid is that we build, we build a totally new energy solution, you can say. So from, from nothing to a full, full energy solution. So it's always, we are always welcoming uh, people to, uh, join, uh, to, to join investing together with us and create a, a joint venture. Uh, we are doing that right now with uh, a big property developer in Milano, in Italy. They are called Landlease. So we are uh, doing a joint venture together with them. Uh, another way of kind of investing in this solution is that we are also looking into how can we licensing out this solution. And then it's just, you know, you, you are licensing the technology. We have 50 patents and also you're licensing the, the platform. And uh, then uh, you can do all the investments and so on by yourself. So that, that's two, two examples of how you can invest in this solution. Thank you so much. So I hope you are listening today and see that uh, it's a lot of interesting opportunities here. And please don't hesitate to reach out to Camilla Björkman to hear more about Ectogrid or visit in Skåne. I will come back to you a little bit later, Camilla. And uh, now I would like to uh, thank you. I would like to move back to Helsingborg and hear more about the H22 City Expo. But first, I would like to set the scene with this uh, short movie. In the summer of 2022, Helsingborg will be the place where change takes flight. A once in a lifetime experience for anyone seeking a brighter future. An amazing living lab where we together look beyond boundaries to a sustainable future we can call our own. Do you want to be part of creating a true change in the world? A true change? And you get ready to be amazed at H22 City Expo. Well, this actually comes from a backdrop, Monica, uh, with the city of Helsingborg having had a very high ambition on innovation for more than 10 years. 
in every uh, steering document in the city, it is actually stated out that we should become the most innovative city in Europe, again, striving on not only competition, but also a large extent of ambition. And this ambition goes beyond the only three goals that you look. We take a broad picture of making not only a smart, but a smarter and more inclusive and sustainable city. And I just had to add in before I join on, you know, what is H22 City Expo, when I hear both, uh, both the companies speaking here, I think that from, from our perspective, where we sit in a city situation, when we look upon what is it that makes Skåne and Helsingborg so unique in these sustainability issues, we talk about on a European level, fit for 55. We say that on a Swedish level, we should be carbon neutral by 2045. Now in Skåne, you have four of the largest cities in Skåne that has an ambition, not only where it says very clear on my, in my political steering documents that 2035, we should be climate, not, uh, climate uh, neutral. But the ambition is 2030. And in order to reach 2030, we need to find these kind of common grounds that Marlin spoke so clearly about, which is to a large extent mission oriented innovation which is driven by the ambition. Now, again, we are ambitious not only on climate neutrality, we are ambitious on the, the whole kind of, you know, challenges that we face with uh, everything from an aging, com uh, aging population uh, to integration, uh, to um, what our residents, the citizens of our city actually expect from the future. Uh, and expect from the city in that sense. So more than 10 years, we have been leaning ourselves forward and said, okay, how do we become the enablers of innovation? The enablers for the people working in the city to drive innovation, the enablers for the people living in the city, talking about hackathons or what we call very often inhabitants, uh, but also ensuring that the people working in the city or the people that are putting their companies and based in the city work together on us in this part. But it didn't move fast enough. So three years ago, we said, okay, we will put extra emphasis on this now for three years. And we have done so. We have more than 300 innovations that we are testing together with businesses, together with civil society and together with academia. And together with residents, of course, uh, being the guinea pigs very often of the solution, because we kind of have to get the inhabitants with us on these transformations that we are looking ahead for. And that is why we said that, okay, we will push this innovation we, uh, through the H22 initiative. But now we will showcase what we have done, how far we are, what are the different solutions that come from not only the cities themselves, but from the actors, the city changers. And what we do is that we invite the whole world to Helsingborg, to Skåne, to Sweden, to Greater Copenhagen, to the north of Europe next summer for 35 days. And that is the H22 City Expo. And there it is more than 80 conferences for a business community in Germany jumping on a train. I would say week one is by far the most international week we have. It is the crown jewel with the Urban Future Conference gathering more than 2000 city changers itself. It already has more than 100 city delegations that are signed up to come attend to see what we have done because the whole exhibition is in the whole city, but also to share what they are doing and preferably make partnerships and relations that will last for a very long time forward. That is also when we kind of, you know, Sorry, I'm just talking, Monica. I see that you're trying to interrupt me. Sorry. Yeah, I, I don't need any questions. It's good, Osa. But I get it because this is so inspiring. So I get inspired. I'm not even working with a project. So really, really good. Could you also share why, why you think, uh, what kind of uh, possibilities do you see for German investors or German companies within H22 this summer? I think that H22 City Expo, you can actually go as a tourist together with your family. It's a lot of, you know, family fun. It's a lot of food experience, etc. But if you go uh, as an investor coming here, 
we will uh, ensure because that we do through the different partnerships and through the different conferences there are landing spots where you will meet the whole kind of you know innovation ecosystem of skåne being on place here may that be if you are into real estate we have the largest real estate conference happening here if it is within mission cities for example again talking about becoming climate neutral for 2030 well the first week has a large focus on this uh, and that is businesses jointly together with civil society and what we call the game changers from all of Europe coming here. Now, the third week I would want to spend a, a, a bit of a focus on because we have, um, even if it's happening all the time, we have a strong focus on urban logistics the third week. Urban logistics and the kind of, you know, pledge or joint mission innovation that is necessary for us to reach the goals by 2030. Again, during this whole week, there will be quite a lot of different conferences that you can attend where you will meet an European crowd. Uh, one of the highlights, I think, but that's maybe because I sit in a, in a city and we know that investments is one of the headaches that we have. <laughs> we have a special two day session on ensuring that how do we model, how do we create, how do we uh, build capacity in the cities for doing climate investment plans. Uh, and this, in this climate investment plans, Helsingborg has some things to share. Uh, we are, for example, the municipality in the world first having a sustainable linked bond. And how do we work with that? But uh, I would not be honest saying that we don't have a lot to learn uh, because we do. And here we are bringing in cities, but also investors in a very, very dense dialogue, ensuring that they see different cases and examples, not only coming from Helsingborg, because it's clean tech Scandinavia supporting with this. So they will see the different cases that to some extent have stopped at the scale up level. So what is the next necessary step to take in order to scale up these kind of innovations? Now that's the 14th, 15th and 16th of June. So I would say either you come here in the first week of the June or the 14, 15, 16, or actually you come anytime. You connect with me, we're not that many here. Uh, my job is to help and support and secure that you get a good outreach and good connections to the stakeholders that are involved in the age of the two cities. Well, that sounds really great. Thank you, Asa. And the links that we have shared during this session will also be in the chat, uh, so you can copy paste from there. Okay, I will move back to Martin again. So we have been talking now about smart energy. We have been talking about smart and sustainable cities. And I will ask you the same questions that we have been talking with uh, Asa, Camilla and Malin about what kind of uh, business opportunities or possibilities would you like to highlight for the people looking today in the region Skåne? Yeah, first of all, thank you. And this is why I like my job. It's inspiring every day. There's so much going on in Skåne. Uh, what we do have is a fair amount of city development within the, the, in, 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 in the smartest city, city context. We have some, some major areas developing in Malmö, in Helsingborg, in Trelleborg, in Lund where we are looking to fill them with smart sustainable technologies, smart sustainable transportation, smart systems and so forth. So, so that's an opportunity for, for, for international companies also to, to come and help out in, in us building the city for the future, the transportation systems for the future and so forth. Uh, then we have lots of uh, opportunities within med tech and, and biotech where we have clusters both in, in Lund with, with the Medicom Village that was mentioned, but also Medicom Valley Alliance together with the Danish, uh, where we are doing innovation both around health tech and, and, uh, uh, and, and uh, biotech, uh, where there are possibilities then to, to either join forces on, on research and development, but also to, to invest and to, to see what's going on. And we're catering, of course, to oncology, for example, uh, infectious disease, uh, infection control, 
uh, and, and fairly high high level research. We have we have a nice little cluster around mobility and the future of mobility, electrification, charging, uh, smart in car systems, uh, safety systems, and also uh, image analysis for for uh, uh, for autonomous driving, for example. That's also a giant opportunity to to join in. Uh, we do have a lot uh, within all, all branches really of sustainability where you try to take maybe an old concept and, and, and see how can we make this future proof. So if you have any questions about engaging in SCORN or, or finding a place in SCORN or finding a company or a partner or a research project, please let us know. Uh, that's why Invest in SCORN exists uh, to, to, to help you find uh, your partner, your place uh, in Skåne. Uh, and we can reach out to, to just about anyone, whether it's a cluster of the one that you see on the screen now, uh, or it's it's uh, different branches of government and whatever is needed to, to get where you're going. Um, yeah. Just to say something about this picture, we are a Good, we, we are a strong region for cooperation. And all, the, all what you see here is clusters around different topics like mobile heights work with 5G, 6G, uh, media evolution is innovation. PackBridge is the next generation of packaging. Sustainable Business Hub is smart cities. Uh, you see industry cluster, which is industry 4.0. Game Habitat, we have a large gaming industry in Malmö that is also spreading into non non-game application of gaming concepts such as AR VR for example that is also for industrial use now so so there's a lot going on I also would like to mention if you have particular research interests within for example material science we do have in Lund uh, now the max 4 and the ESS European spallation source uh, that are basically very, very sophisticated instruments for looking at, for example, materials at an atomic level. So if you're looking into, for example, battery research or, or carbon research, carbon fiber research, even uh, wood research, new uses for, for wood materials, those facilities could be very beneficial. And of course, you need to do it then in cooperation with the university and, and the research institution, but, but they're, they're open for, for projects, basically. So come join us and, and come and take advantage of the opportunities that, that we offer in Skåne. Uh, I think you would be uh, pleasantly surprised. Well, thank you. That sounds really exciting. You were talking about so many different areas that I think, feel like something should match for someone listening today. Really a growing business region. Thank you, Martin. And I also, you, you, we heard before that you can run Ectogrid from a mobile phone, but I can also run the Q&A from a mobile phone. So I will now see if we got any questions. Yes, we have. Okay, I will start with you, Marlin, and ask you, Hydrogen is high on the German agenda. Do you already have concrete hydro hydrogen projects at your site at Bashebeck? No, uh, we don't have uh, yet. Uh, we, are, uh, we are working on it and, and, uh, and we're really happy to... Uh, uh, we, look, we, we look for partners. Uh, so if you have... Uh, uh, any uh, suggestions so we are really happy to take that but this is one of our priorities is to really find an uh, uh, or not find to set the the agenda of how we should uh, develop uh, Basebeck and uh, hydrogen is uh, uh, absolutely one of the things we really looking into um, yeah, I mentioned the project we have uh, on PASOP, um, on the hydrogen area. We have also invested in a company called Liquid Wind, uh, which um, uh, will produce uh, um, uh, e-fuels uh, for, uh, for shipping industry. 
and uh, we also have another project in the north of Sweden in Luleå when we also have with uh, partners and I think this is the perfect setup when you're looking into this kind of project so we have this project with the with the Luleå harbor with the Luleå energy with the uh, AVV and ourselves and then also a customer and then you have the whole value chain and what we at uh, Juniper also think is important is the harbor so we're really uh, uh, happy that we have Basbeck it's beside the sea we have Oskarshamn where we have one of our nuclear power plants it's also by the sea the Lulio is by the sea if we look into Germany we have one uh, one uh, harbor we are um, developing is Wilhelmshaven, Rostock, and we also have um, a project ongoing in Rotterdam. Uh, yeah. Thank you so much, Malin Dahlroth at Juniper. And we also have a question from Camilla, to Camilla Björkman at E.ON. Is your ectogrid already launched in Germany? What, has, uh, what kind of reaction have you seen if it has been launched here? Uh, very positive reaction. It's a new technology. As a, uh, I think the challenge in Germany is sometimes that you have a regulated market. So if you already have a solution, uh, it can um, you, you have some uh, ch uh, challenges with that. But when you have new built areas, for example, then this is a really interesting solution. So. Uh, in our showroom, we actually have some uh, German examples. Uh, so we already have had some, um, oh, sorry for my English. We already had uh, signed some agreement, activity agreement. So, and, and, um, so these kind of solutions are, you know, when they ask for the, what, they, what kind of solution they want, they kind of describe uh, ectogrid. It should be able to, to, you know, work with low temperatures. It should be able to, to reduce energy and so on. Okay, thank you so much. And Martin uh, from Invest in Skåne, also a question for you. What about the automotive cluster in Skåne? Bosch established some years ago in Lund. Could you share about the automotive cluster? Yes, uh, we do have a number of, of companies. We don't build cars, except for one car that is built in Skåne called Königsegg, and it's periodically the fastest car in the world. Uh, but uh, other than that, our focus in the automotive cluster is we're very proud of Bosch. They established here a few years ago uh, with 100, 100 engineers. Uh, now there are 230 engineers, and they want to be uh, about 100 more in the next few years here. So. They are, are very much rooted in the Skåne tech ecosystem. We also have Volvo cars in Lund that develop basically all in-car systems, what makes the car smart. Uh, the software development for the Volvo car is done in Lund, uh, for example. Uh, we have companies such as NVIDIA doing all sorts of research on, on image processing for, for self-driving cars. We have companies working with 5G. We have companies working with uh, smart charging, as you know, if you're on an electric vehicle, uh, there is still something called charging time, and we have companies working on that. We have uh, uh, some companies working on the last mile transportation, of course, on the electrification of roads. So we, we, we do have lots of companies working with different aspects of in-car systems and, and making the transition into the what, what is the car in the future. Uh, and we also have something called uh, Smarter Mobility, which is actually a privately held cluster for uh, innovations for the automotive industry. Uh, they have members such as uh, Borg Warner and Haldex and, and all the, the hardware manufacturers, uh, as well as software manufacturers, and a possibility of uh, also working with virtual reality to do models of safety features, for example, in, in cars, there's a virtual reality lab there. So, so we, we do have a strong influence, even though we can never compete with Gothenburg who actually build the Volvo, but we, we think we're doing well. <laughs> 
Thank you, Martin. Well, time flies. It's almost three o'clock. So I hope you all got inspired to collaborate with the, the companies or with the organizations in the region Skåne. And if you have any more questions, don't hesitate to follow up with the panelists today. Or you can also, if you have questions about Sweden in general, you can contact our partners in Team Sweden. That is, for example, Business Sweden, or the Swedish Chamber in Hamburg, or the German Swedish Chamber in Stockholm. And you're always welcome to reach out to me or my great colleagues at Embassy of Sweden. And I hope uh, you enjoyed and you will join us next time when we zoom in on another region and other business sectors. And uh, with that, I want to thank you all for looking and thanks to the pan panel for participating. And I hope you will have a wonderful spring. Hej då!